are going to a different place, which is a new normal. 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 New normal. Embrace the new normal. The new normal. A new normal. The new normal. New normal. This new normal is going to look very, very different. Not normal, but a new normal. The new normal. New normal. There will be a new normal. A new normal. New normal. A new normal. The new normal. A new normal. This is the new normal. This is our new normal. Our new normal. A new normal. Our new normal. New normal. The new normal. Our new normal. We will transition into the new normal. This will be the new normal until a vaccine is developed. In my lifetime, there, this will be the greatest economic hit. But you don't have a choice. People act like you have a choice. People don't feel like going to the stadium uh, when they might get infected. You know, it, it's not the government who's saying, OK, just ignore this disease. And, you know, people are deeply affected by seeing these deaths, by knowing they could be part of the transmission chain and you know, old people, uh, their parents, their grandparents could be affected by this. And so you don't, you know, you don't get to say, uh, ignore uh, what's going on here. There, are, there will be the ability, particularly in rich countries, to open up if things are done well over the next few months. But for the world at large, normalcy only returns when we've largely vaccinated the entire global population. The entire population. As we see states start to relax stay-at-home orders and increase antibody testing, the WHO is issuing a warning about using that testing to issue what's been called immunity passports. Nine Health expert Dr. Paul Coley joins us right now to go over this. Good morning, Dr. Coley. So first of all, what is immunity passport and uh, why would we want to issue one? So, Natasha, as the cases in the United States approach a million, experts like Dr. Fauci have actually said that this could be a real possibility. And essentially what it is is documentation that you've had the infection, that you have antibody tests, and that you can presumably go back to work or relax social distancing. What's the risk with an immunity passport? So it makes a ton of assumptions. The first assumption is that the test is accurate, that you're actually getting the right result. The second assumption is that the antibody actually gives you immunity, which we know for a fact may not actually happen. Firstly, you may not have the right type of antibody. You need something called a neutralizing antibody. Second, you may not have the right number of antibodies. You need a threshold to really have immunity. And the third, we don't know how long the immunity lasts. So you can imagine if you issue this passport, allow these people to go back to work and potentially relax social distancing, this could actually increase risk, not just to them, but to those that they come into contact with. And in places like New York, where 21% of people are testing positive in the city for the antibody, this could have real implications for causing potentially another surge when people are not immune. And so for this reason, the WHO has actually issued a warning that having the antibody does not necessarily mean you have immunity because we have no scientific evidence of mm -hmm. that yet. But as you can imagine, issuing people immunity, immunity passports that allows them to kind of freely mingle, if we're not entirely convinced mm -hmm. that, that they're fully protected, could really cause a huge surge. Yeah, it can be dangerous. All right, Dr. Coley, thank you so much for breaking that. In Estonia, the government and businesses, including Radisson Hotels, are cautiously testing what's called a digital immunity passport. Like a physical immunity passport, it records whether persons caught the virus and whether they've recovered. It's hoped to enable safe travel or allow employees to return to work. But the science behind it is very uncertain. Lise Narusk is with Back to Work, the NGO developing the software. We are currently operating with, uh, with the prerequisite that immunity as such regarding COVID-19 is currently, you know, it's vague. Like scientists haven't really uh, agreed yet on w when does it exactly develop for how long. Uh, we are, uh, in that sense, focusing on the future scenario when we do have more uh, answers uh, to that question. But currently, we do know that the immunity is developing, that they already agree on. So we're a bit ahead of time, but we have agreed that we cannot really start developing something technologically when we have all the answers, uh, questions answered. In fact, the World Health Organization has explicitly warned governments not to issue immunity passports. It says there's actually no evidence so far that a person cannot be infected twice. It's a concern shared by Estonia's own Board of Health, despite the government testing. Marianne Harma is head of the Infectious Disease Department there. 
there is so much uncertainty scientifically that uh, we cannot trust that password. And it, may, it might pose a threat for the public health in sense that when a person sees that he or she is positive, has antibodies, then he or she might think that, yes, I am now protected. But we don't know if you are protected. It might be that you are not protected. And then you have the false sense of security. But it's unclear just how reliable and effective the tests are. We're so uh, early in the, uh, the pandemic that there are a small number of people, you know, com uh, comparatively, who have been infected and who have cleared and will have both the antibodies. Uh, but we don't know for how long these antibodies will last over what period of time, because the ant all antibodies sort of tend to drop off with time. At a time when government lockdowns have robbed so many people of their livelihoods, there are also concerns about criminals forging immunity documents. This passport can be the equivalent of yellow fever or polio certificates that allow international travel to resume if countries recognize such a certificate. But there will be a problem that I see that it's around counterfeit certifications because individuals, communities urgently want to return to economic activity. There are also difficult ethical questions about whether such certificates will cause more prejudice and further restrict the most vulnerable in society. You can ensure that people face lower risks and we reduce the death toll from this, but you have to make more decisions about you know, who will be allowed to work and who won't be, who will be allowed to travel, who won't be. To get into a shop, one must show a green health code proving good health. This is obtained by scanning a mosaic through a mobile app. The green health code depends on a number of different factors, including travel history in the last 14 days. For the customers, the system is reassuring. But for those who obtain a red code and are in good health, no explanation is given. This is the case for this man, who had no one to appeal to when he'd just finished quarantine after a trip to a different province. Uh, 所以就是我当时是红色,就没有办法不太合理吧,但是也是一种防疫的一点手段吧. The precautionary measures are reinforcing the Chinese state's surveillance. After analyzing the code of one of these apps, this journalist found that once registered, the user's data was handed over to the police. There's nothing on the app to tell you that the police are in any way involved. It says that this is a government service, but then it doesn't sort of specify beyond that, so it's pretty surprising to then see this beacon that's immediately going to police. Has the pandemic become an opportunity for China to boost surveillance of its citizens? According to the authorities, these are just exceptional measures.
If you contract COVID-19 and survive it, you might be entitled to what is called an immunity passport, a certificate that proves you're at less risk of contracting the coronavirus because you've already had it. That will most likely exempt you from some of the restrictions put in place to contain the virus, so you'll be able to leave isolation and go back to work. While immunity passports are not a thing yet, some countries like the UK, Germany and Italy are considering introducing the practice. Immunity passports would potentially help ease lockdowns, get the economy rolling again, bring doctors and other healthcare workers back to their jobs after isolation where they can continue to cure infected patients. But for someone to be given an immunity passport, doctors will first need to check their blood to see if coronavirus antibodies are present. The antibodies indicate that the person has some degree of immunity to the virus, but there are a few issues with the immunity passport. It could potentially give people a sense of false security, as antibody tests are not always accurate or effective, and will need to be carefully validated and approved for use. Scientists also do not yet know if a past infection could prevent reinfection and how long one could stay immune. There are reports from China of people who have been infected twice, and a Japanese tour guide in her 40s from Osaka was reported to have tested positive for COVID-19 twice, even though she had recovered the first time. But it isn't just the science that makes immunity passports potentially problematic. Some people are worried that such a system would grant one group of people more privileges and rights that another group will be missing out on, paving the way for other serious issues. So Health Passport Ireland is powered by proven and validated systems, allowing us all to take safer steps in our return to our normal way of life. Here's how it works. With Health Passport Ireland, everyone can now be tested for COVID-19 at any time, which helps to protect you, your family, our jobs and our economy. Your COVID-19 test will be performed with highly accurate serological or swab tests. Your test is performed by a medical professional. After your COVID-19 test, an authorised healthcare administrator creates your Health Passport Ireland account. Your login details will be emailed to you immediately with a link to download your Health Passport mobile app. The authorised healthcare administrator securely updates your COVID-19 test results in your Health Passport. Once activated, you can easily display your COVID-19 status on your mobile. Your Health Passport can be scanned if you wish, which helps protect those around us. Your COVID-19 status will efficiently display as green, amber or red, dependent on your test results. This allows us to go about our daily activities in a safer way. We can all use Health Passport Ireland in many ways, such as travel, hospitality, education, healthcare, construction, offices, entertainment, visits and much, much more. Naturally, the validity of your COVID-19 test will expire over time, so an automatic reminder will be sent when it's time to be tested again. Your status will move to amber when your test period has expired. Health Passport Ireland does not use Bluetooth or track your location. This preserves your privacy. The systems can work in harmony with existing government contact tracing apps. When a vaccine becomes available, your official vaccination status can also be displayed within your Health Passport. You can even keep a diary of your international travel and events you have attended. Health Passport Ireland can be linked to existing secure medical systems if required. For example, at your GP or hospital. In some 200 Chinese cities, you now need a green code to get on public transport. Without it, you can do almost nothing. No crisis should go to waste. The epidemic has enabled the Chinese authorities to normalise digital social control, something they're unlikely to relinquish.